welcome back to EAK TV. I'm delighted to have Eva Khalil join us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So Eva is the chair of the European Parliament Science and Technology Assessment Body. Um, so how are you enjoying the event so far? Um, is, I think, I believe, is, you know, Greece is obviously where you're from. So like, um, obviously it must be um, great to have an event here. Well, it's exciting to have at home uh, friends from abroad yeah. and people that have worked together. And also it's uh, amazing because the University of Nicosia uh, actually had the first degree on blockchain. And uh, if you think that Cyprus had this adventure of uh, the banks shutting down and uh, Greece capital controls in the banking system, yeah. this is really important and uh, interesting to, you know, to have. So um, we've spent a lot of time in Malta recently. I think you as well at Malta Blockchain Summit. I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there. You were on the um, you were on the advertiser material. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I was, but the, the, it was a mistake. I don't understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously we we spent a lot of time there. Um, I was just wondering what Greece's um, you know parliament uh, uh, thoughts are about blockchain right now. I wouldn't say it's Greece. I'm working on the European, uh, in the European level, yeah. and on the European projects. So uh, I would say we try to have a very positive environment for innovation and technology, and not to uh, accept the resistance of the traditional system and the banking system. So I think everybody now understands the, the potential and the impact that this technology could have. Um, in Greece, I think it's more the philosophy of blockchain that is uh, interesting and there are some communities trying to build up uh, around it. Uh, but unfortunately, if, uh, if, the government, uh, if the government is occupied with different things, other problems to solve, then you miss this, uh, this train of um, exponential technologies. It's not easy to catch up. So from a European perspective, um, what um, applications of blockchain technology do you think could be implemented you know, in, in first or immediately? Well, I already see applications on supply chains and I think this is where we're going to have more value. Uh, value is mean, in means of like an industry that could benefit from that or smart contracts. And uh, we have to, leave them, to give them legal certainty, but I think there is uh, a lot of room uh, to work and improve things. And of course, identity, it would help us a lot. Since we are here in Europe, we have 28 different member states, um, legislation, languages, everything. So this would help a lot. And cross-border transactions would also be amazing. And I would say that in every sector, I can see um, interesting uh, change and developments. Uh, but value may be more in supply chain. The other things are uh, removing friction, intermediaries, saving us from uh, costs that we shouldn't have um, in financial services. But, but uh, we also talk about the value of the blockchain itself. So is the EU sponsoring like any projects maybe in the humanitarian field or at the, at the moment or anything like that? So at this point we have some pilots coming up, so some platforms for SMEs to use blockchain and this was uh, funded by Europe. We have uh, five awards, five million for five ideas uh, blockchain for good, so if anyone has a good idea, until 2019 you can apply to get this award. I think it's more a recognition of uh, using blockchain for a cause. And we're going to have a lot of uh, goals and tenders um, every month on agriculture. We have already um, interesting projects coming up and several, uh, for, uh, licensing, certification, very interesting ones. So would you say that the EU is... Um perhaps trialing regulation in Malta and using that as a test case and then seeing how it works and then potentially rolling it out? Well, actually, we work uh, three years now centrally from, uh, from Brussels. I'm working on the resolution. We have an observatory. And uh, now we're going to work also on the ICOs. But each member state, they can do whatever they, they want. And then we're going to try to see what works best and try to have a harmonized solution for anyone that wants to implement it. So it's going to be um, a choice that you're going to have. And uh, Malta is making some efforts. Uh, we have Luxembourg is making some efforts. We have Switzerland, of course, close to EU. And uh, we do have France is moving very fast. They are testing a lot of ICOs and try to have uh, a registry for ICOs. 
and that would help us a lot to guide us uh, to the right legislation. And also we're going to have a report from the European Parliament in a couple of months on ICOs, we have blockchain and trade. So we're moving bit by bit because also the technology is not uh, ready to show us its full potential, but we're trying to be there. Okay. Um, um, do you think the EU would consider you know, putting like driving licenses or European health cards on the blockchain? Yeah, this is already something we're working on. And we're working on uh, my health, my data, so basically a way to control your data, to use blockchain to apply the control of uh, our personal data, like GDPR principles. And also we try to, to have, as I said before, a platform for solutions uh, of licensing, certification, and maybe a bit later land registry. And obviously, you know, we are from London, so uh, we've got lots of uh, Brexit talk going on right now. Um, do you think that blockchain could play a role in uh, creating, um, you know, obviously there's this issue about the border with Northern Ireland and the UK. Do you think blockchain could solve this issue? Well, blockchain and in general, the digital market has no actual borders. So I think there is a way to reunite with the UK um, if they actually don't try to do it in other ways too. Um, so I say the new technologies and internet has no borders. We have geo-blocking, but we try to remove it from uh, most of the things and services we have. Maybe less the audiovisual, but we're getting there. Um, so I think um, blockchain and the solutions that we see, they can be accessible from everywhere. So I wouldn't say that we are uh, restricted by any decision uh, UK will, will do. And I can give you one more example. I've been working recently on the crowdfunding file. So this means we had national borders for crowdfunding. So if you have an idea, you can get funding up to one million, but only from your country. Now we have a second uh, choice, a European crowdfunding solution, up to eight million. So you can choose that and you don't have to take money just from your country, but from any European country. So we're getting there. So um, how, do, how do our viewers find out more about what you just discussed? So this is the FinTech Action Plan. There are 23, I think, actions, sandboxes, crowdfunding, financial services. So piece by piece, we're trying to put it together and, uh, and have some harmonized legislation for FinTech. And at the same time, blockchain, you can, uh, you can uh, get the newsletter of the observatory. It will update you for everything that's happening in Europe. Um, so what do you think um, blockchain's best use case would be in terms of sustainable development? Well, well, you can use it for several things. I said, like, one thing is identity to start with, smart contracts, automation, so where you, you um, combine it with AI. You can use it for aid, for emergencies, to, um, to get a lot of data and make sure that they are, uh, citizens are protected, but also use this data to predict or prevent uh, disasters. You can reduce the friction and the hidden costs, which means you save a lot of money and uh, you can reduce poverty because then you can open new um, funding for ideas and support SMEs already with blockchain and the ICOs. You can see ideas that you could not get liquidity and cash now being able to test their limits by using um, ICOs as a crowdfunding platform. So I think the potential is there to change uh, many things. So um, obviously, you know, you are a big, um, you know, you, you, you support blockchain, the blockchain space. You regularly speak at these, these conferences. You're a big believer, I believe, in blockchain. Um, what are the key challenges that you face, you know, with your role of trying to push this through? Well, uh, we have lack of understanding from uh, uh, politicians and uh, quite, you know, resistant environment in terms of uh, the industry and the, and the intermediaries, of course. Um, that are afraid, that, and they are right to be afraid, they're going to be disrupted. Uh, but disruption is something that you cannot stop, like innovation, uh, which means they have to try to adapt, and we will try to give them enough time until we prepare so that they can uh, uh, accept and implement also the same, the changes to what they do. But at the same time, I think if you understand it, if you understand the potential and the possibility, you start using this technology uh, even to improve your services. 
So whoever thinks uh, can be will be disrupted, he can actually use blockchain to improve his business and solve problems. It cannot solve everything, okay? Despite what everyone says. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about the price and the volatility. No. It's about the real value that it can create. Yeah, Ideas, uh, rewards, access to services, funding. Um, um, you can support businesses and have, uh, without intermediaries, get your money back, uh, get a percentage from uh, your copyrights. There are several things that blockchain can do and just uh, on your mobile device. So I understand you've um, recently compiled a report on the blockchain space. Um, can you tell us a bit more about what that is and how we can find it? About what? About the um, you, you, you mentioned that you wrote, yes. Yeah. So the resolution is online. It, uh, it gives guidelines to the commission that we will be supportive of this technology. And we have now legislative files in all the sectors that are following up, like trade, and this means we support to have cross-border transactions and uh, how to follow the supply chain also beyond borders. So um, you can find all of that. But the main thing that this uh, initiated was a lot of funding for Europe to take the risk of testing this technology. So money that they will give, 700 million, and they will not get your equity. They are just uh, supporting your ideas and uh, hopefully if some of these ideas work then Europe can become uh, really um, decentralized and a heaven of trust. So um, what would your advice be to you know, small medium enterprise businesses that are looking to pivot to the blockchain, you know, EU businesses? Would you, what would your message be to them? Obviously they might be a little bit concerned about regulation. So. I would tell them if they have a good idea, they should proceed. Nothing will stop innovation. And uh, if they have a problem that they want to solve and they understand how blockchain can solve it, then they should proceed. And of course, even if there is no legislation, if something is a fraud, it's a fraud. If it's a scam, it's a scam. If it's a security, it's a security. We have existing legislation for that. If it's not, but if you try to have a service or a project, um, I think the legislation will come and be complementary and will not uh, stop you from testing this technology. It's like the third economy. When it came, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of discussions and uh, some, in some uh, countries they tried to stop Uber. But Uber is becoming a big business. It's taking over in uh, several uh, sectors um, a lot of jobs. It creates a lot of jobs, even more. And nothing could stop it. So you cannot ask for innovation to follow the rules, follow the law, follow the, um, uh, the, ethic, uh, the ethics of the society and the values and the principles. But you can test especially now that we're going to make sandboxes, you can test the limits of the technology if you're offering um, a solution. So I think, um, you know, I think you're a very inspirational character um, with, with everything that you've been doing to drive the space forward. What is it that um, drives you to, to do that every day? I want to be the politician that I would vote for. <laughs> so I would vote for someone that would give me um, options, potential, uh, that would understand that education should change to prepare and give me tools for the future and that uh, will keep an open mind to all these new um, technologies that on, not many politicians can understand because it's too technical sometimes. So I'm trying to do what I would like somebody to do for me and I'm trying to, to open the, the way for uh, young people to not only to participate in, uh, in having a stronger European Union, but to create growth and to keep them uh, in their country so that they don't have to move out. They stay here. We have our own industry and we have the best uh, quality um, that we can provide to them, respecting also the values that Europe respects. Um, so yeah, is, is there, do you have any developments or any news that you'd like to share with our viewers today? We're going to present some piece of uh, strategy for blockchain in February and the ICOs will be coming. So I think uh, we're going to have uh, interesting things to follow up and we will, um, we will try to make sure that uh, the best ideas will have our support in, in Europe. And uh, we're just waiting for your ideas.
Okay, well, thank you, Eva, for your time. That's the AKTV. You heard it here, here yourself. February, watch out for that announcement. Uh, subscribe below. That's the AKTV. Thank you.